we are back with part four of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLB. And we are on chapter 18. We are reading 1 Samuel chapter 11 through 20 this week. Jonathan's covenant love for David. Um, now it came to pass when David had finished speaking to Saul, Jonathan's soul was knit to David's soul, and Jonathan loved him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan cut a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan stripped off the robe that was on him and gave it to David along with his armor, his sword, bow, and belt. Saul's jealousy. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and had success. So Saul set him over the men of war. It was pleasing in the eyes of all the people as well in the eyes of Saul's courtiers. Upon their coming back upon David's return from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing in circles to greet King Saul with timbrels with joy and with three string instruments. So the women sang one to another as they were dancing, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his, David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry. This thing was evil in his eye, and he commented, they, they've ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they've ascribed thousands. Now what more does he lack but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. It came about the next day that an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, so that he was raving within the palace. While David was playing music with his hand, as he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand, and Saul hurled the spear, thinking, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Now Saul became afraid of David because Adonai was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his entourage by appointing him as a captain of a thousand. So David went out and came in before the troops. David had success in all his undertakings since Adonai was with him. When, at, when Saul saw that he had great success, he dreaded him, but all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter Merib. I give her to you as a wife. Only continue to be my son of valor and fight Adonai's battles. For Saul thought, My hand needn't be against him. Let the hand of the Philistines be against him. But David replied to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life for my father's family in Israel, that I should become the king's son-in-law? But when it was time to give Saul's daughter Merib to David in marriage, she was given as wife to Adriel the Mahalathite instead. Michal's love for David. Now Saul's daughter Michal loved David when they told Saul the matter pleased him. Saul thought, well, I will give her to him so that she may become a snare to him, and the hand of the Philistines will be against him. So Saul said to David, you can still become my son-in-law even today with a second one. Then Saul commanded his courtiers, speak with David privately and say, Behold, the king delights in you and all his courtiers love you. So now become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's courtiers whispered these words in David's ears. But David said, Is it a light thing to you becoming the king's son-in-law, considering that I am a poor man and of little account? Saul's courtiers reported back to him what David had said. Then Saul said, Thus you will say to David, the king desires no bridal dowry except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemies. So Saul schemed to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his courtiers told David these words, the word seemed right in David's eyes to become the king's son-in-law. Before the day, before the days his men, I'm sorry, before the day was before the days were fulfilled, David had risen, go, risen, gone with his men and killed 200 Philistine men. Then David brought their foreskins and gave them in full number to the king to become the king's son-in-law. So Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, as a wife. When Saul saw and realized that Adonai was with David and that Michal's Saul's daughter loved him, Saul grew even more afraid of David. Thus Saul became David's enemy for all days. When the chiefs of the Philistines marched out, and as often as they came out, David proved more successful than all of Saul's officers, though his name became highly esteemed. 
chapter 19, Saul tries to kill David. Now Saul told his son Jonathan and all of his courtiers to kill David, but Saul's son Jonathan delighted much in David. So Jonathan informed David, saying, My father Saul is seeking to kill you, so now please be on guard in the morning and stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you will be, and I will speak with my father about you. If I notice anything, I will tell you. So Jonathan spoke well of David to his father, Saul, and said to him, May the king not sin against his servant David, since he has not sinned against you, and since his deeds have been very beneficial for you. For he put his life in his hand and killed the Philistine. And Adonai won a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. So why would you sin against innocent blood by killing David without a cause? Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, As Adonai lives, he will not be put to death. So Jonathan called David, and, and Jonathan told him all these things. Jonathan brought David to Saul, and in his presence, as before. Once again war broke out, and David marched out and fought the Philistines, and inflicted a great slaughter on them, and they fled before him. Yet once again an evil spirit from Adonai came upon Saul, as he was sitting in his house, with his spear in his hands, as David was playing music with his hand, Saul sought to pin David to the wall with a, with a spear, but he slipped away from Saul's face so that he drove the spear into the wall. That night David fled and got away. Then Saul sent agents to David's house to watch him in order to kill him in the morning, but David's wife, Michal, warned him, saying, If you don't escape for your life tonight, Tomorrow you will be dead. So Michal lowered David down through the window, and thus he went, fled, and escaped. Then Michal took a household idol, laid it in the bed, put a quilt of goat's hair at the at the head, and covered it with a cloth. When Saul sent messengers to arrest David, she said he's sick. So Saul sent the agents back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, so I may put him to death. When the messengers came in, behold, the household idol was in the bed with the quilt of goat's hair as its head. Saul then said to Michal, Why have you deceived me like this and let my enemy get away so that he escaped? Michal answered, He said to me, Let me go or I'll kill you. So David fled and escaped, went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. Then he and Samuel went and stayed at Naioth. N A I O T H. Saul was told, Behold, David is at Nayath in Ramah. So Saul sent agents to seize David, but they saw a band of prophets prophesying and Samuel standing and presiding over them. Then the Ruach of God came upon Saul's agents, and they too prophesied. So when Saul was told, he sent other agents, and they too prophesied. Then Saul sent a third group of messengers, and they too prophesied. Then he himself went to Ramah. And when he arrived at the great cistern in Secu, he asked, Where are Samuel and David? Someone answered, Look, they are at Naoth at Ramah. So he proceeded there at Naoth at Ramah, and the Ruach of God came upon him as well, and he prophesied, and he kept walking until he arrived to Naoth at Ramah. Then he too stripped off his clothes, and he too prophesied before Samuel and lay down naked all that day and all that night. That is why people were saying, is Saul too among the prophets? Chapter 20, Reaffirming Covenant Loyalty. Then David fled from Naoth to Ramah, came before Jonathan and said, What have I done? What is my crime? What is my sin against your father that he should be seeking my life? Never, he said to him, you will not die. Behold, my father does, not, does nothing great or small without disclosing it to me. So why should my father hide this matter from me? It cannot be. Then David swore again, saying, Your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. So he must have thought, Let not, Let's not let Jonathan know about this, else he will be grieved. But truly, as Adonai lives, and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said to David, Whatever you say, I will do for you. So David said to Jonathan, Look, tomorrow is the new moon. When I am supposed to sit down with the king to eat, instead, let me go hide myself in the countryside until the third evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked my permission to run to Bethlehem, his town, 
for it is the annual sacrifice there for the whole family. If he says thus, very well, then your servant is safe. But he, but if he becomes very angry, then know that he is determined to harm me. Therefore, deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of Adonai with you. But if there is any iniquity in me, then kill me yourself. Why should you bring me to your father? Jonathan replied, far be it from Far be it from you, for if I know for sure that my father has determined evil to come on you, then wouldn't I tell you about it? Then David asked Jonathan, who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Jonathan said to David, come, let's go out to the field. So they both went out to the field. And Jonathan said to David, by Adonai, God of Israel, I will sound out my father about this time tomorrow or the day after or the day after. Look, if it is good toward David, wouldn't I then send word to you and disclose it to you? May Adonai do so to Jonathan, and even worse, should my father intend to do you evil. If I don't disclose it to you and send you away, that you may go in shalom. So may Adonai be with you as he has been with my father. Now, if I am still alive, wouldn't you show me the loyal love of Adonai so I wouldn't die? Yet also don't cut off your loyal love from my household ever, not even when Adonai cuts off all of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan cut a covenant with the house of David. So may Adonai requite David's enemies. Jonathan made David swear again because of the love he had for him, for he loved him as he loved himself. And Jonathan said to him, tomorrow is the new moon. You'll be missed because your seat will be emptied be empty. On the third day, you must go down quickly and come to the place where you hid as you did on that day and remain close to the stone easel. E-Z-E-L. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I were shooting at a target. Now look, I will send a lad saying, go find the arrows. If I specifically say to the lad, see the arrows are on this side of you, get them, then come for it is safe for you and no danger as Adonai lives. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then go your way, for Adonai has released you. But as for the matter which I and you have spoken about, behold, Adonai is between me and you forever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon came, the king sat down to eat a meal. So the king sat on his seat, as usual, the seat by the wall. Jonathan stood up, and Abner sat down by Saul's side. But David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul said nothing that day, for he thought it must be an accident. He must be ceremonial, ceremonially unclean. Yes, that's it. He's unclean. Yet it came to pass in the day following the new moon, the second day that David's place was still empty. So Saul asked his son, Jonathan, why didn't Jesse's son come to the meal yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul. David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem as he said, please let me go for we are going to have a family feast in the town and my brother has commanded me. So now if I have found favor in your eyes, let me go please to see my brothers. That's why he hasn't come to the king's table. Then Saul's rage blazed against Jonathan and he said to him, you son of a perverse rebellious woman, don't I know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness. For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingship will be secure. Now send word and bring him to me, for he is a son of death. But Jonathan answered his father, Saul, why should you? Why should he be put to death? What has, has he done? Then Saul hurled his spear at him to strike him down. So Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. So Jonathan rose up from the table in fierce anger and did not eat food for the second day of the new month, for he was grieved over David because his father had dishonored him. It came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out to the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad was with him. He said to the lad, run, find now the arrows that I am about to shoot. Now as the lad was running, he shot an arrow past him. When the lad reached the place of the arrow, which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried out after the lad and said, isn't the arrow behind you, beyond you? Then Jonathan called out after the lad, quick, hurry, 
don't stand there. So Jonathan's lad picked up the arrow and came to his master, but the lad knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the arrangement. Then Jonathan gave the gave his weapons to his lad and said, go take them back to the town. As soon as the lad was gone, David emerged from the south side and fell on his face to the ground and bowed down three times. Then they kissed each other and wept together, though David wept more. Then Jonathan said to David, go in the, go in the shalom that we both have sworn to each other in the name of Adonai, saying, may Adonai be between me and you and between my offspring and your offspring forever. And that's the end of chapter 20. I'm going to quickly recap chapter 18, the relationship between David and Jonathan is discussed in this, in this chapter. Um, Saul has turned against David and Jonathan doesn't understand why. Um, and he has actually talked his father um, around, um, you know, bringing harm to David at one point. Um, and Saul um, had promised Mirab, his daughter, actually to David for actually killing the Philistine, for killing Goliath. Um, but then he he gave Mirab away to someone else. And then he decided Michal, you know, he would he would allow David to marry Michal, thinking that Michal would be a snare to him. And um, also, you know, in order to to earn um, the ability to be his son-in-law, he wanted him to go kill Philistine, thinking that, well, that would kill him. But actually, God was with David, and he killed 200 Philistine. Um, Chapter 19, um, again, Saul is is wanting to kill David, um, and, and actually Mikkel ha- helps him to get away. Um, she lowered him out of the window and, and actually covered for him. And then again in chapter 20, David and Jonathan make a covenant, and Jonathan actually learns that his father indeed wants to kill um, David and actually helps him to get away um, to safety. And they make a covenant together that, you know, nothing, you know, that that they would remain uh, loyal to each other and to their offspring as well. So that is actually a recapping of what we have just read, a really quick recapping. I'm just going to give a little nugget here about Saul. Um, Saul actually declined. He started out good, and then as as we can see, he really declined. He um, elevated himself into an office of a priest, made sacrifices to the Lord um, that he wasn't supposed to do. He took it upon himself. Nobody told him to do it. The Philistines had gathered themselves a large number to fight with Israel, and the men of Israel hid in caves, thickets, and in rocks and high places and in pits. And some went over the Jordan in the land of Gad and Gilgal. And Saul was in Gilgal and tarried for seven days. And Samuel hadn't come when he thought he should come. So he offered, he did burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when Samuel came and he saw, he saw this, um, he was furious with him because, you know, he was not supposed to do that. And Saul told Samuel he had not made supplication unto the Lord and forced him and forced himself to offer a burnt offering. And Sam, Samuel told Saul that what he did was foolish, and he did not keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded. And for now, uh, he would, you know, he the Lord would establish his kingdom with someone else, um, that he wanted to establish it with him, but no. So, and then we see in... Um, Samuel 14, another thing that he did um, was was actually tell the people, you know, he cursed people. Um, he, he made a curse to people. Anyone that ate until, that, that ate any food until evening would be cursed. Um, and this was a foolish order. Um, and his son didn't know about the order. And he ate. So he, he actually was going to put his own son to death because he actually made that curse. But the people actually came and, and spared Jonathan. So he was doing a lot of foolish things. 
and his, you know, and he was supposed to be, you know, he was supposed to be responsible as a king. And then the last thing that, that he did, another thing that he did um, in, in chapter 15, um, Samuel um, told Saul that he was anointed, that the Lord anointed him king over, over his people. Um, but he failed to um, listen to Adonai. Um, he was supposed to go in uh, and destroy all of the Amalekites, in, including the king. He, and, and they were more, um, was more um, concerned with um, pleasing everyone else. And they wanted to have spoil. They took the best of the best. They weren't supposed to take anything for, for sacrificing. That wasn't what they were told to do. They were supposed to destroy it all. And including Agag, the, the Amalekite king. And he didn't do that. He took him as as captive. So Saul ended up killing him. And actually Saul left. Um, basically, he, well, actually, yeah, Saul, I'm saying Saul, I'm, I meant Samuel. Samuel ended up um, killing Ag Agog. Um, Saul wanted um, Samuel to go with him um, to pray to, to God and give God glory. And um, Samuel said, no, he didn't want to do that. Um, that basically he was not going to return to him, return with him because he had rejected the word of God and the Lord rejected him as well. And he was telling him all this and, and that the Lord, um, you know, the, the Lord is not um, going to change his mind. The Lord God of Israel will not lie or change his mind for he is not a man that should repent or change his mind. And he let Saul know um, that he was not in good favor with the Lord at that point. And then in chapter six, I'm not sure where this stopped. So I'm going to pause this now because it, it looked, it was, this was paused. Um, so I'm going to come back with part five.